Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. I hope you're having an amazing Friday. This is the third episode of The Marching Dead, which is pretty much where I make a tutorial every week on Friday, uh, trying to break down and imitate some of the effects seen on The Walking Dead. Now, as you can see from the beginning intro, we're going to be breaking down uh, one of the most iconic scenes from The Walking Dead. It's the first episode, the first season, where Rick is crawling over the the hill where he sees the abandoned and previously overrun by zombies uh, military camp. It has like helicopters, Humvees, uh, military tents. So I just try to uh, imitate that by just adding military vehicles and military tents to a empty parking lot that was just otherwise really, really boring. So to start off with the effect, I actually did listen to myself from the other video. I did use a tripod and I did use a green screen this time and it made it a lot easier, saved me a ton of time. So it was definitely worth it. I actually took out this green screen, uh, which is not a portable green screen. It's supposed to be just a studio setup like this, but I brought it out to the parking lot and then we were just pretty much holding it up. Just one shot, uh, took us about 10 minutes. Spill it on my green screen. That's not good. Hmm, what this is. Product placement. So anyways, back on track. So the first thing that we're going to do in After Effects, before we key anything, uh, I am usually apply some kind of denoiser to the clip that I want to key out. And the reason why is oftentimes with DSLRs, especially with the ones that record in H.264 format, uh, you get a lot of artifacts, a lot of just weird compression stuff that might confuse your keying software or keying plugin. And it might not give you that clean keying that you would, that you would want to have. So, I usually just slap that on there, try to like clean the image as much as possible in order for the keying software to uh, just give me the best results. It's not a must, but it's a great thing to have. And moving on, when it comes to keying, I usually don't just slap on a, a you know key light or whatever plugin you're using. I actually create a, a crazy like S curve with curves, and then I apply key light. By applying the curves effect and doing that weird shape, it actually brings out the contrast and brings out those colors so that green and you know greenish green is actually really really green. It just helps separate your subject from the green screen and it makes it a lot easier for your keying software or keying plugin to key out the green or blue depending on what you're using. But obviously you're thinking well I can't really use this with these crazy colors and super saturated look for what I'm trying to do. That is correct. We're going to use this only as a map. So what we're going to do is duplicate that layer and we're going to just delete all the effects except for the for the denoiser if you want to keep that in make your image a little bit cleaner and then you're going to set the clip with the crazy colors as the mat for your clip and the reason why i do this i'll just ram preview what it looks like uh, with just a key light so it kind of looks like this you have weird artifacts going on i mean i'm sure there's a way to fix that within key light but i just find this a lot easier and that's what i'm used to doing and i'm also trying to keep it as generic as possible so that if you have a not so good keying software, keying plugin, then this might help you guys as well. Play around with the with the key light settings, you know, I usually just increase the clip to black and I decrease the clip to white. Just mess around with the settings, it may vary depending on the, the shot that you have. But once you find your adjustments and your image looks fairly decent, it's on to uh, getting rid of everything else other than your subject. So we're just going to create a rough mask around the guy just walking towards the green screen. So once you do that, uh, in my case, I start to have an issue when, when the subject gets really, really close to the green screen because his shadow is actually starting to reflect, or the pavement, I should say, is starting to reflect some of the green from the green screen. So you start getting these weird holes in his shadow. Now there's a simple, simple fix for that. What I did is I created a new solid and I picked the color of the shadow and then I just made a mask. Uh, and I put it below that layer so it kind of covers up those holes. So whenever it, it sees through, it actually sees that solid that's the same color of the shadow. So just, that kind of just fixes it all. Next thing, um, I just imported a clean plate and I just took a picture. So it's obviously going to be much bigger in resolution. So I just have scaled it down and you can see that it's matching really, really well. All right, so now here comes the fun part. It's just getting all kinds of different images, all kinds of different elements that you want to put in your scene. You know, go crazy. I mean, I just was limited to what The Walking Dead scene had. So, you know, I, I just wanted to put those sandbags, put those tents, put those Humvees, and, and there's a helicopter in the background, I don't know if you noticed in the beginning. But just to kind of imitate the elements that they had. But, I mean, you can use these techniques for anything. And in fact, I actually made a video uh, showing you guys how to do some tips and tricks on, on how to create a map painting or set extensions. It really comes down to how to effectively integrate 
elements, which are just images that you're putting over your clip and, and how to make it seem like they're actually there. So we're gonna get into it a little bit with this video, but if you haven't checked it out, just click that video or even at the end, I'll just post the link in the description. Uh, it's, it's really helpful, it goes a lot more in depth than what I'm going to be uh, covering today. But very briefly, the first two things that you gotta keep in mind, where your source of light is. And the reason why you need to keep in mind where the sun is is because the shadows are gonna be directly affected by where the position of the sun is, and that's what you're gonna see. Another thing to keep in mind, whenever you're first importing your elements into your composition, uh, also match their source of light with the source of light in your shot. And what I mean by that is, let's take for example this army tent. You can see that it has a brighter side and then the other side not facing the sun has a darker side. Match that with the direction of the sun in your, in your scene. So you're going to have to uh, probably flip horizontally some of your images in order to have the brighter side of that, let's say car or Humvee or tank or whatever you're using, match to where the sun's direction is. Once you do that, then it's, it's all a matter of just matching the shadow's angle to that. And obviously After Effects can't calculate shadows for you, so what you're going to have to do is actually kind of draw them out. So what I did is I created a new solid and I masked, uh, I almost painted on the ground the shadows for each element. So you just create a mask over that solid and you have to kind of think of what that shadow would look like based on where your sun's position is. And again, use real shadows in your real scene as reference. Like I'm using constantly the guy's shadow. To, to understand what angle the shadows are at and what intensity they're at, what color and all of that. So keep that in mind and do that for every element. Also, after you add the shadows, we're gonna create something that imitates ambient occlusion. If you have Element 3D, you might have heard this before, uh, but pretty much what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a dark gray or black solid and we're gonna create little tiny masks at any point of contact that your elements have with the pavement or with whatever your real scene has. So for example, uh, this Hummer, has four points of contact, the, all the four tires, and I created four little uh, squares or four little triangles and then I just feathered them out. And you can see that that adds a little bit of more just integration with the ground. So it's definitely something that uh, will help sell the effect. Again, if you check this video, I go in depth on how to do all of that. But that's pretty much all that is involved into doing this effect. It's really, really, really easy. It's just a matter of uh, positioning your elements in a smart way, in a creative way, and adjusting the elements colors to match your scene colors. So, you know, just slap on some curves. In my case, I shoot cine style with my uh, camera, and which means that everything is really flat and everything is really desaturated. I usually just tint those elements and I, I take out some of the contrast, uh, make them a little bit more evenly lit, more flat. Once all of that is done, then I create an adjustment layer and then I just do some basic color correction uh, just to make everything look right and then you can use whatever you want you can make it look however look you want it to give it so in, in my case i added some curves i added some tint and i also played around a little bit with magic bullet looks it's a great tool uh, and, and it's really great for just on the go color grading so that's pretty much all that was involved with this effect it looks a lot more complicated than what it is but it literally comes down to keeping in mind where your source of light is and just drawing out the shadows. Another quick tip, if you want more realistic shadows that better match your element, what you can do is you can duplicate that element and you can apply a fill effect and match that color with what the shadow color would be. And then just apply an effect called corner pin and you can kinda just squish it down over a surface. It's a little tricky, it takes some practice, but you can really just kinda distort it to make it look like it's being cast on a pavement or on the ground or whatever. So. That's another great way to make shadows, to, to fake shadows, really. But anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. And share this video if it helped you guys. Subscribe to see more, to be notified when my next video is up. And uh, anyways, I appreciate all the love you guys have been giving and all the support. Again, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Core Productions, and I'll see you next Friday.